About that rap, we'll get to that in this video, but first a big warm welcome to the Philippines video series. The Philippines is perhaps the most beautiful tropical country in the world with the best beaches, the best biodiversity, undoubtedly some of the friendliest people in the world, and of course the inventors of karaoke. <laughs> And in the next couple videos, I would like to share with you my travel tale from the Philippines, where back in February, March 2020, I traveled to some of the key destinations, which was also right about when the world went into a global lockdown, and that brought my trip to an end. Well, sort of. I couldn't leave the Philippines, but I also couldn't stay, so I ended up living in a tent on a beach. But we'll get to that in one of the later episodes. Today, we focus on my tour of Metro Manila. And with the Philippines flirting with reopening their borders to tourists, fingers crossed, I do hope this video can help inspire a trip of your own. And just as a side note, much of this video was shot when I didn't have a good video production workflow. So future me, me right here, will have to step in and out to sort of shape the narrative. But with all that said and done, let's roll the intro. So like with most adventures, we begin in the airport. And my trip began in Dubai airport. I was living in Dubai at the time. Man, I missed that feeling of taking off, knowing an adventure lies ahead. Next stop, Manila. Hello from the Philippines, country number 78. We begin in Metro Manila, a massive urban area made up of 16 cities and home to over 13 million people, making it the fifth most populous urban area in the world. Manila has been heavily influenced initially by the Spanish, and you can still see their legacy today at Intramuros, and later by the Americans. Fun fact, the street plan of Manila was designed by Daniel Burnham, the guy that also planned Chicago, San Francisco, designed the flat iron, which is irrelevant but kind of cool. And then the Philippines was invaded by Japan, but more on that later. Anyway, I love starting my adventures in the big capital cities because they're often key to understanding the historical and socioeconomic forces that shaped the country and culture. <laughs> The plan for today is really to venture out into the Manila metropolitan area, which is made up of a number of sub-cities and has a total population of 13 million. It's absolutely massive. In the metropolitan area, I want to visit some of the squatter settlements or informal settlements or slums, whatever you want to call them, because as an urban planner, I find these places fascinating and there's a lot you can learn from the communities that live in these areas. So yeah, follow me on this journey and uh, let's see what I can document. So first things first, I'm gonna grab a jeepney to the city center. Jeepneys are the main form of public transport here and probably also the cheapest. They're like a type of paratransit or informal transit. Let me find somewhere a little quieter and I'll give you a little bit of history and context. Jeepneys are the dominant form of public transport and also in many ways the backbone of the Filipino economy. They are essentially 12 to 16 seater minibuses how did they emerge, you might ask? Well, I'll cover that in another video, but long story short, following World War II, after Japan destroyed much of the railway system and the Americans left the Philippines, the Americans left behind their army willy jeeps and the local Filipinos stripped them down, elongated them and heavily decorated them using paints, chrome and even neon lights. Okay, perfect. Thank you. <laughs> so I'm in Basco. 
also known as Beiseco Compound, which is an informal settlement in Manila's port area on a man-made island that was made in the 1960s to serve as a dockyard for the shipbuilding activities of the Batan Shipyard Engineering Company, a company that fell when the Ferdinand Marcos dictatorship ended, and this resulted in an influx of urban poor who used the shipyard material to build their homes and they lived illegally on this land. As such, they did not have access to electricity up until 1999, relying on candlelight which led to many community fires. Today it is home to more than 60,000 residents who live in the shadows of downtown Manila. And I'm here today to visit the Bay Seco Beach which recently made headlines. And when it comes to exploring places like this... You know, people warn you against it but it's an extremely friendly place. Hello! Do you want a photo? Yes! To the beach? To the beach! Hey, you're a nice This right here is Beiseco Beach, which was once a highly polluted beach. Check out these before and after pictures. In the before photos, it looks almost like a landfill. And it was so polluted that it was illegal to swim in the water. But through the Manila Rehabilitation Project, 15,000 people came together and cleaned up the beach. Really amazing effort, hats off, fellow Filipinos. Fellow Cambodians, do take example. Anyway, next stop, Navotas. So right now I'm in Malabon, one of the sub-cities in the metropolitan area of Manila and the plan is to go to Novotas and you'll see why shortly, about an hour north. Hello! <laughs> it's where a lot of the fishing activity and industries are based and it's an informal settlement with a quarter million people living there, 23,000 people per square kilometer, which is absolutely crazy. And I have our one video that I want to take with my drone, which is the reason why I've traveled all this way. Getting here was no easy task. I had to take the LRT tram, then a jeepney, then a little electric three-wheel tricycle bike thing, and now I'm on foot and I'm about 15 minutes away. I'm deep inside the slum now trying to get to the waterfront. Generally, the waterfront is cheaper land because it floods a lot easier, so you'll have these big informal sediments develop. Hello. I think I've found my takeoff location. Philippines. Everyone is so friendly, I have to say. Right? Everyone is so friendly. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's amazing. You got it. Oh. <laughs> so he's taking me to another viewpoint where we can maybe get another couple shots. Smell the, the barbecued fish. This is beautiful. I think so. I will try. If I have battery, I will do it. Oh. I'm very happy. 
happy. That's exactly the picture okay. or the videos I wanted to get <laughs> of the boats and the sunset. So thank you to you and your community. Okay. Just wait, uh, I'll go and get my helmet another. This brings us to the end of episode one. And just on that last clip where I'm on the back of a stranger's motorbike, that guy just generously offered to drive me to the nearest jitney station. Man, you Filipinos are so unbelievably friendly. Anyway, that was the first two days of my trip around the Philippines. I do want to follow up on this video with a video on the Jipneys, but first I want to do the other episodes where I go from this very urban, dense environment to a very beautiful, natural environment. So do stay tuned. Feel free to like and subscribe to this video if you enjoyed it. And also do suggest potential topics I can cover. I focus primarily on urbanism and trust me, the moment the Philippines opens their borders, I will be there. Anyway, that's it for episode one. Stay tuned for episode two dropping next weekend. Next stop, Cebu. Until then, take good care.